Hello and welcome to Surviving and Thriving in Higher Education. My name is Shahed and today I bring to you another episode in our series, Coping with COVID. Joining us is Dr. Megan Fieser, Assistant Professor of Chemistry at USC, to discuss what it's been like to run a lab this fall, the difficulties her lab has faced, and how they overcame them together. Please keep watching. We hope you enjoy it. Ultimately, we would love to do some social distancing outdoor group meetings of some sort, um, but we have to see kind of what the, just so that everybody can see each other. Uh, I think everybody misses really seeing everybody together, um, but that's gonna depend on how concentrated people are outside the buildings on campus, because uh, we wanna be able to find a place where we can stay six feet away from any person and still, you know, be able to have a conversation where you can hear each other. So uh, we hope that we can maybe do that sometime this fall, but we're gonna, again, keep an open mind and be fluid as, as best as we can. In what ways do you think PhD students are impacted by COVID this fall, and how would this pandemic continue to impact their PhD journey? The biggest impact for current researchers is going to be their growth in how to be productive. I feel like in graduate school, I spent five years learning how to really prioritize my time. And by the time I was a fifth year, I was, I excelled at being able to get a lot done in a short amount of time. But as a first year graduate student, you know, you're still learning techniques and you're still really kind of getting, wrapping your head around your project. And I think that that takes a lot of, you know, thought and, I think that it's going to require researchers to grow a little bit faster than I had to. Um, because, you know, a lot of these situations that groups are having is that they're doing shifts where you may not get the hours in the lab that you used to be able to have. Um, so there's lower occupancy in, in the lab, smaller numbers of people to protect everyone's safety. And that's great. Um, that's really important. But that just means that people have to go in with a plan and really have good ideas of what they're gonna do when they do get the chance to go in. And I think, you know, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that ends up, you know, helping, maybe pushing researchers along and, and giving them the, the kind of encouragement to, to learn those skills sooner than I had to. In your opinion, do you think the shift towards COVID will affect grants and motivation in non-COVID related research? In my opinion, Funding agencies really do understand that there are a lot of pressing issues. There's a lot of concerns for, you know, climate change and, you know, my research is on plastic pollution. And um, there's a lot of different issues that aren't going away just because the COVID crisis is here. Now, there is money being funneled into COVID right now, um, which is a good thing. I think, you know, research on vaccines and everything is, is really important and, and it's great that government agencies are able to jump and put funding into those those efforts. Uh, but I really don't think that government funding away from uh, other areas is gonna be a problem. At least I hope. <laughs> I think it might depend on your field. Maybe if you are in a position where you could make an impact on COVID research, you might feel a little bit guilty that you're not putting efforts into those areas. Um, I know I've had conversations with my colleagues of if only we could see a way of, of making a meaningful, meaningful contribution to uh, that research, we would love that. Um, for me, it's not too big of a, a problem with motivation because I do feel like I'm working on a, um, a pretty important topic uh, that, again, hasn't gone away just because the COVID crisis has actually gotten worse. And so for me, I'm, I'm able to uh, really stay motivated in my research, but I definitely think it will, will depend on the field. And, and um, my advice is that you shouldn't feel guilty because every every group has reasons for why they're doing what they're doing. And, and uh, COVID will come and, and we will find ways to deal with it and experts will help us doing that. And then we're gonna continue on to tackle really important problems uh, elsewhere. What would you recommend that universities and labs do to keep their students safe and informed during these uncertain times? I, 
was part of the chemistry department's committee for reopening. Um, and what I think was really great for, that worked really well for us was just having lots of discussions. We spent over a month having many discussions of how do we set the, the rules and guidelines that make everyone feel comfortable. Um, at USC, one of the most important things is that to return to campus, it's an opt-in policy. So students can opt out of coming to campus at any time. And so it's really the responsibility of the department and the university to come up with plans that make students feel safe because that's what we want. Um, we don't want students to come to campus to do research and, and feel like they're putting their, their health and safety at risk. Um, so we, we worked together. We also incorporated the students' ideas. So we had several sessions of just question and answer uh, panels of what our plans are before we actually rolled them out. And we took the students' ideas of anything that they were concerned about or curious about and tried to address them in our, in our plans. Um, and then the other thing is that I thought what I thought, think we did well was that we incorporated a feedback loop that no matter what, if something comes up that we didn't anticipate, that students and staff and faculty can both in person or, or not in person with their names or anonymously, they can uh, convey their concerns to the department and we can make meaningful contributions to, to alleviating those concerns. And so I think what's really important is when you pull out all of these plans, not everything's going to work the way you intended it. And so coming up with these feedback loops so that you can address things that come up quickly and um, and open for the entire department, I think that's really important. Given the new regulations that universities and PIs are implementing in their labs, how do you think this would impact research productivity? So as an assistant professor, my group is very young. And so I see a couple areas where this can be challenging for, for groups like mine. Um, one is community development. I think that ultimately my group is, I, I, I've designed it to be a team and be a collaborative and supportive environment. And when you don't have everybody together really discussing science, uh, I think that that really causes challenges in creating the culture that you really want for your research group. Um, also, because I have a lot of young students, you know, I want to make sure that I can train them appropriately and make sure that they know how to do every, all of their, their tasks um, safely and, um, you know, in, in, in a controlled way. And the ability to do that on smaller, like smaller occupancies can be challenging. Um, my group has found ways to do that. I think our, so far our struggle for the fall has been how do we make sure that researchers get the right amount of time in the lab while also having the important activities where everybody's present, like group meetings or any type of social interactions, especially when trying to really talk to new incoming students and giving them a real sense of, of who we are as a group and, and why someone might be a good fit. And so I think right now we're still trying to figure that out, but I think the best way to tackle these problems is to be open-minded. And so my group has had many conversations together of, well, this is our first plan. And if that doesn't work, this is our second plan. And then if that doesn't work, then this is our third plan. And we're just constantly changing with what works and what doesn't work. And we hope by the middle of fall, we'll have a really good rhythm um, and so I think in general, to stay nice and motivated and, and really be excited to be in the lab, even with all of these social distancing guidelines, um, I think it's just being open-minded and really communicating with your group, even if they're not in the room with you. And in conclusion, do you have any final words of advice that you would like to address to PhD students during this time? I think it's a really good time to be doing research, right? We've, we've learned that there are things that come up that are important problems. Um, and it's a good time to be at a university doing that research. Um, and I think that 
this is your opportunity to grow, like I said before, faster than I did. And um, ultimately you could come out with your out of your PhD with um, more productive tools to get more done quickly than I ever did. Um, and that will be so valuable to any job that you pursue later on down the road. Um, we're learning that things are changing with technology and, and a lot of people always avoided giving talks online and all these different things. So this kind of gave us a really nice push. And I think we're all learning skills that are gonna benefit us in our future careers. Uh, maybe we'll travel less and we'll do more talks online. Um, but, you know, I think the, the most silver lining thing you can take out of a pandemic like this is what skills have I learned that will benefit me down the road that I maybe never would have learned if this didn't happen? Um, and how can I take advantage of learning how to do them in a really efficient and really uh, clever way? Um, you can tell that there are some people who give presentations online that are truly excellent at it and they've learned how to do so in a really great way. And so try and drive into those skills and, and um, take advantage of it. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment what you'd like to see next. And don't forget to check out our past videos. Till next time, stay safe. Bye.